Hey guys, Edbud here and welcome back to the channel. Today a bit of a discussion piece for you surrounding running shoe manufacturer bias. So over the last couple of years, both in person and on the net, I've been called a Nike fanboy. Anti-Nike, uh, an Adidas fanboy, but also anti-Adidas as well, that I never cover Adidas shoes, that I only like Nike shoes, that I dislike Nike shoes, that I only... Oh, you get the picture. I mean, we've all got various different experiences, haven't we, in running shoes. Some of them good, some of them bad. That's okay. Remember, everybody's opinions are valid, as long as they're based on our experiences, of course. But we've all seen on the internet, people can air opinions and views of which have no basis. They're not really a reflection of their time in a shoe or a specific manufacturer's shoes. They're more like a mirrored or simplified, superimposed version of somebody else's views. Perhaps they've consumed some content from, I don't know, another YouTuber, maybe someone they know. I mean, people ask me the question, do I watch other YouTubers or shoe tubers reviews and videos? Yes, I do, but I tend to watch them after I've reviewed a shoe, not before. I like to try and meet a shoe head on with my own initial opinions. Like food, microwaves, coffee, TV, I like to reach the door and pay the entrance fee and take something in, see what it feels like, consume it and try and understand it. I might not really like the show I'm watching, but at least I've watched it. People seem to get very upset about specific running shoe brands and manufacturers. If you say that a Nike shoe or an Adidas shoe or whichever brand it is that's their favorite isn't great, that they just can't even compute that that might be a thing, that it might not work for a one specific person. It just bemuses me. Why would a shoe or a logo or something along those lines upset someone so much? Surely if you need to buy like a fridge or a dishwasher and it's within your budget and it fits in the space that it's got to go into and it's available to buy, then it could be a good purchase, couldn't it? I think regardless of the manufacturer, I'm not sure I could walk into an appliance store like that and only buy a certain brand's product. It has to fit what I want it to do. And I think it's the same with running shoes. I absolutely believe a runner's opinions on a running shoe are valid and they're relevant. If they've got a few kilometers, they've got a few miles into the shoe. I mean, you've got to take that as being reliable. But you've got other people that have got this preconceived idea about something, and that's it. Their mind will not be changed regardless of how much data and evidence you present to them. I mean, all the time I get, Nike shoes are overpriced. Nike shoes fall apart. I think I've pretty much proved that that's not the case. I've not had a shoe fall apart on me ever. There's a couple of little bits here and there that you think they could have designed that better or they could have perhaps implemented that idea in a slightly different way. But they pretty much hold together. The Pegasus line, they just go on forever. They're not my favourite, but it doesn't hurt me to say that. Another one. Adidas shoes are too narrow. They're too long. They're too short. That's not a thing. Some of the models may be a little bit short. Some of them may be a little long. That's just how it is. Boost is old hat. Boost is out there. No one likes Boost. It's not true. Loads of people love Boost. They might be lighter runners, they might be heavier runners. That's okay. It's okay for people to like something that you don't like. Here's a good one. Zumex doesn't last. Zumex just falls apart. I've seen Zumex wear down quickly, yes, with certain foot strikes, but I've had no real major problems with Zumex. In fact, it's pretty durable when you consider it. I mean, you're slamming the thing into the floor. Road, tarmac, I mean, Kipchoge and the gang, they run with those shoes on dirt trails, don't they? Basically. And they seem to hold up okay. Those guys put them through the ringer, don't they? The way we treat them here, just run on road, well, I mean, that's babying them almost. Zumex, it lasts for ages. Just ask Kev Burton. Reebok shoes are cheap and they break. No. Just know, there's loads of really happy runners out there using Reebok shoes on a daily basis, and they'll show you they don't break. Maybe some of these views are based on bad experiences that people have had in the past. And we've all brought a product, haven't we, that maybe has a bit of a flaw, it didn't quite work right, the manufacturing process was a little off, 
Maybe someone was making it on a Friday afternoon. I can see how that plants a little seed in people's mind that makes them dislike a product or not trust it fully. But then again, some people just have some preconceived opinions about something before they've even tried it. Oh, that shoe's terrible. Yeah, it's rubbish. You shouldn't buy it. That brand is rubbish. There's nothing there to back up the argument. In terms of getting content to you and honest opinion to you, I always try to put the miles in. You know I tell it like it is, guys. Regardless of the brand, I've got no favourite brand. I just like running shoes. I like trying them out. I like testing them. I like experiencing them. If I just had a favourite brand, well, then I'd miss out on loads of other stuff that I could try. A diamond in the dust. I think that could be quite limiting and I'd miss out on a potentially really great tool. I've received some comments recently that I never give any meh or bad shoe reviews. Well, I don't go out to procure shoes that aren't going to work for me. I do some research beforehand. That's partly what the running shoe yay or nay videos are for. Am I going to review the shoe? Do I think I can give a reasonable, honest opinion about the shoe? On the odd occasion, I've picked up a shoe that just hasn't really worked that well, and that's okay. As such, absolute duds are minimized, and the earth credits can be spent a little more wisely. And as such, reviews are typically okay or better. Why scores out of three? Because I'm odd. People say I should do the same thing as other shoe reviewers. Well, that's not going to be interesting. Where's the fun in that? I mean, guys, I sniff the shoes for crying out loud. I think that tells you all you need to know. Comments, discussions, researched opinions, and peer review. That all makes the world spin. And it's absolutely okay to form some opinions on something. Could be on your experiences. Could be on others' experiences that you trust. But I think with any internet-based content, you've always got to be a little bit wary. I always try and steer away from saying, yeah, this running shoe is going to make you run fast. I think that's ridiculous. We are the ones that make us run fast. It's not a running shoe. It might help a little bit. But saying it's the fastest yet, it's just tiresome. They're tools, equipment, apparatus. They're amplifiers of us, aren't they? No shoe's going to magically make you faster. Just don't buy all that old baloney. More foam, plates, rubber, it's not the answer. For instance, I recently grabbed a pair of the Hoka Oni Oni Mac 4. Loads of people have been messaging me to say, Ed, test out the Mac 4. We want to know what you think. So I picked them up. At the moment, it kind of feels like they're a little bit of a improved ring con, maybe. Social media's a wash with images of people receiving their Hoka boxes and holding these Mac 4s. But at the moment, I'm struggling to see what all the fireworks are all about. It seems okay. I'll put it through its paces and bring you a review, but I'm not sure it's something that's going to set the world alight. I mean, there's a lot of great daily shoes out there right now. It's a area where there's a lot of competition. In short, I always try and deliver you a unbiased review. Try and paint a picture for you of my experiences in the shoe. Let's not forget, they're just my experiences, just one man. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that will review a shoe even before it's been worn. What worth can you take from that? I mean, the sole purpose of a shoe is to be worn. I mean, why review a shoe that's the wrong size for you? That yay or nay series that I do is to establish whether I'm gonna review a shoe or not, whether I'm gonna test it. Is it worth me testing? So that's the initial sort of gate. If it gets through, I'll review it. If not, I just feel someone else can probably do a better job of giving you an honest opinion about it. I mean, the next percent too, I wasn't gonna review that. But then I heard about the upper. And what was the big problem that I had with the original next percent? The upper. So if it makes it a better shoe, I was all over a review for that. I think all of us, though, at times have got a little bias there. There's certain manufacturers, perhaps certain shoe lines that we really like. We've enjoyed in the past. We want them to be good again. I think we're all a little bit guilty of that. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one, guys, down in the comments a quick musical interlude for you. I dug out this mini album from The Sleepy Jackson. I think it was released in 2001. Good Dancers and Mini Skirt are the two crackers on here. Really interesting songwriting, song structures and production as well. It really doesn't sound like these tracks were made in 2001, more like yesterday. I believe that Luke Steele is behind a lot of the tracks here. I think he's in some other bands as well from the Australia region. You've got everything on here from sort of sampled drum beats through to some pedal steel. There's all sorts of stuff. A real mishmash and 
certainly reminds me a little bit, I suppose, of some of Tame Impala's material. So do go and check this out from the Sleepy Jackson. No idea what it's called, just search for the band. Thanks for tuning in to the very end, guys. I very much appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos. And it really helps the channel out if you give this video a thumbs up like and share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.